Um, we're going to start in just a minute. Um, we're just waiting for everyone to come in. I see some familiar faces here. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Okay, Danny, go for it, man. I think we're all ready. Hi, everyone. My name is Danny. I'm the business development lead at Astrolabs, I'm focusing on the on companies expanding to Saudi. Um, obviously, the purpose of today's meetup is a Q&A session effectively um, with any concerns or questions you may have about the expansion process. I have my colleague Mustafa also here. He's the KSA country director. So Hello here. everyone. Um, good, good to have you here uh, with us today. Uh, I hope you are, you're all safe and sound. Uh, we're happy to have you today for a quick uh, overview of how to uh, uh, manage the process and how to basically take this uh, interesting step that, towards growth in this market. So if anyone has any specific questions, feel free to ask us, uh, um, ideally one by one, and uh, we'll answer them accordingly. Anyone have a question so far about uh, setting up in Saudi or uh, any plans to expand to Saudi? Don't raise your hands all at once. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's some questions in the chat. Yeah. Can it track it? Let me kind of see them. Okay, so let me go one after the other. back. All right, so this first question is from Wyam. Um, we am, yeah. We am, yeah. Okay, so in terms of a license, generally speaking, obviously companies can operate from elsewhere in the world and still do business with Saudi-based companies, but it's becoming increasingly more challenging, especially with government or public sector organization, they insist upon you actually having a physical presence in Saudi. Um, also, when it, from a business development perspective as well, it's much easier, especially with Saudis compared to other parts of the region, um, to actually engage with these people face to face. It's all about trust effectively with, with Saudis, um, Saudi companies and Saudi people in terms of improving your uh, portfolio of companies that you, ha you work with. Uh, um, yeah, ultimately, more and more, it's going to become essential to actually have a physical presence on the ground in Saudi. I don't know if Mustafa has anything he'd like to add to that. Um, so basically for the first question, just a quick addition, um, you would need to have a fully established business here, legal entity here in Saudi. It could be a branch, it could be an LLC uh, of its own but you uh, definitely need to have a license uh, in Saudi Arabia to be able to operate as a foreign uh, company or as a foreign investor. Um, the, the, the first step in the process is to actually get the uh, investment license, which is, uh, you can think of it as a permission for you to own a business in Saudi as a foreigner. Uh, the ownership is, uh, is strictly from company to company. So the company outside of uh, Saudi Arabia will own the company, the newly uh, formed company in Saudi Arabia. Um, and, and that's how it, the, the ownership structure will be. Multiple companies could own a single entity here in Saudi, but they have to be a company with financial statements uh, and so on. Yeah, exactly. When it comes to ownership of a company, uh, in, in, to answer Ahmed's question, um, yeah, it has to be with the company and not individuals. And that parent company must be able to provide audited financial statements for the last fiscal year. Now, the benefit, the major benefit right now is actually we can start the process without these the core documents needed to initially start start it. So 
previously it used to be the trade license memorandum of association and audited financial statements for the last year. Um, these would all have to be attested by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Saudi Embassy at the parent company country. So if you're based here in the UAE, you'd have to do it here in the UAE uh, to actually start the process. Whereas now, in order to get the SACIA investor license, um, the trade license, financial statement, memorandum of association do not need to be attested. We can start the process with scanned copies of the originals as long as that company has been operational for a year. Um, and that ultimately makes the process a lot quicker. Should people decide to wait until the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Saudi Embassy reopen after COVID or once it starts going back to normality, um, we expect there to be some major bottlenecks with that because even with some clients before all of this happened, it took them three months sometimes to get these documents in order. So there's a, there's a huge benefit to this, not only in terms of time to actually initiate the process, but also the cost savings associated with it because these attestations, it can be you know 20,000 dirhams plus or, or the equivalent of wherever your parent company is based. So uh, let's move to the uh, second question about market research and data. Basically, um, uh, Saudi has been uh, the Saudi government has been pushing for uh, more reliable and more uh, solid data gathering and collection and reporting over the past three four years. And now the um, statistic authority uh, basically is is fully empowered to provide the right. Um, uh, research data and all the relevant information about government performance and all of this there is the um, uh, data is becoming uh, um, more reliable as we as we move on but uh, in terms of uh, research agencies uh, we I don't really know a specific one that I can recommend but uh, the data is uh, there are many consulting firms that are actually issuing reports the Ministry of uh, Economy and Planning is also issuing a lot of reports. So the data is there. It probably is scattered here and there, but it's there. It's available. Okay, is there any more questions? Uh, yeah, there is the um, from uh, Ahmed uh, regarding the ownership rules for Saudi. Yeah, we've covered company. that. The rules are very simple, honestly. It's an outside company outside of Saudi that owns 100% of the company in Saudi. Uh, there's no individual um, rules. Uh, there are no individual in ownerships. Uh, the ownership must be from a company or to a company outside Saudi Arabia or multiple companies outside Saudi Arabia that have at least one month of financial, uh, one year of my financial statement. Yeah, so just to clarify that point as well, it obviously it's 100% foreign ownership, so, it, so there's no need for a local partner, which used to be the case you know, several years ago. Um, and it's not it, it, an onshore license as well, so it's not the same as a free zone setup as what we have here in Dubai. Um, you're actually able to operate anywhere within the kingdom with that. Right, so we have a couple more questions coming in. Uh, you don't need to, yeah you, you don't need a Saudi partner um, just to confirm that point from Ahmed. Uh, what other restrictions? A bit, in terms of business activities, um, the most common activities are technology related, um, media, events, uh, management consulting. There are there there are limitations when it comes to certain activities. So when it comes to trading, import, export these types of activities have very high minimum capital requirements, um, which, you know, if, if you're looking for either any of those activities, it's 30 million real for um, as a minimum capital requirement for the first year and 300 million over the first five years. Whereas if you're talking about technology, um, media, I'd say the, these other types of activities, then they generally have no minimum capital requirements which you'd have to effectively deposit. Um, it, most of our clients do around 10,000 real deposited within a Saudi bank account 90 days after the commercial registration is issued. 
Um, so there's very low minimum capital requirements for the majority. Certain activities would have third party approval requirements, which we're not actually involved with, but we can provide guidance on. Um, there is an activity sheet that we can share with people that are interested in, in pursuing this. Um, so feel free to send an email to daniel at astrolabs.com. I'm more than happy to share that with you. And once we identify the activities that you need, we can then come back to you as, as to what is needed in terms of third party approvals, whether it's permitted, whether it has certain minimum capital requirements. So generally, generally speaking, the activities are service based rather than like say, trading, import, export. Great. Um, follow up question by Ahmed is about uh, you don't need a Saudi partner. Actually, you don't need a Saudi partner. The local Saudi entity would be owned 100% by the foreign entity, the, the foreign company that will own 100% of the local entity. Um, there are a few exceptions, especially when it comes to trade um, and very selective uh, activity types. They need to have a local partner. Uh, but uh, more the, the activities that Daniel talked about, about uh, services and IT and technology and uh, media and uh, advertising and all of this, uh, the wide variety of activities don't require a local partner. Yeah, and in terms of the next question from Hush, um, e-commerce, a very popular question. Um, yeah, so this is a trade, so again, this goes back to the trading import export requirement. Generally, you would need one or all of them, um, which means that it has very high minimum capital requirements of so 30 million if you want to retain that 100% foreign ownership, um, 27 million if you want to have a local Saudi partner which has 25% stake within the company. Trading, trade, these types of activities are rarely done, to be honest, with, the, with this model. It's normally service-based activities that, um, yeah, that, that are being used for this. So e-commerce at the minute is a challenging activity. All right. Um, we have. Um, we move on to um, the next question. What are the restrictions on business activities? Uh, basically, the there are certain known restrictions that are, um, like for example, recruitment, uh, HR, and um, things that are restricted for local companies or local owners. There are things that require third-party approvals, like training, education medical and health, uh, medical stuff, um, some of the media activities, publishing, and so on and so forth. And some activities don't require any third party approval. Once you get the license, you get the setup and you're good to go. So it really depends on the activity. There's a huge list of activity lists that we can share with you. Uh, and then based on what you have in mind, we can deliberate, talk to the ministry and see what are the, the regulation around each one of them. Yeah, and uh, just to pick up on Harsh's other part of the question, um, in terms of cost, happy to discuss this with you separately. So, feel, let's say, feel free to share me, uh, share an email with me to Daniel at astrolabs.com. We have three different packages uh, basic, advanced, and premium. Um, a lot of this is outlined on the brochure, which I'll go into more detail once you email me directly in terms of cost, because we do have some offers running for this month obviously considering the current situation we have put in place a number of incentives for um, prospects to expand to saudi and make it a lot easier for them obviously with the travel restrictions with there's a number of things we can actually do as we have the team on the ground obviously headed by mustafa um so we we can do the entire process for you um but I, i'm happy to outline this in in an email if you um or, or call post this if you want to discuss cost in more detail. Um, in, in terms of Kater Katerina's uh, question, so why exactly now is a good time to expand to KSA? I mean, the, the setup process itself takes around three months to fully establish the business and for it to be legally operational there. Um, as mentioned earlier, uh, as discussed, 
Um, the attested documents that are normally required are currently being waived by the Saudi authorities. So we can actually start the process with scanned copies of the required documents, um, which obviously saves you, it can save you months, it can save you 20,000 dirhams plus in attestation fees. Um, people obviously come, start, like the, the, everything's beginning to start opening again and hopefully once everything's in place, three months time in terms of company being established, it's, it's probably a good time to actually initiate this right now. Um, there is a lot of interest. We're processing a number of companies every single week with this. Um, there's always been a lot of hunger to actually expand to Saudi because it's, it's the biggest market in the Middle East. Um, you know, it, it's with, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a huge opportunity right now. So this is, this is one of the reasons. I would also add to the um, reason about a good time to expand here is basically uh, you can think about it on four four different pillars. Uh, the first one is the market opportunity and the evolution that's happening in the local market in terms of uh, business, new business sectors, in terms of uh, consumer behavior, in terms of government kind of agenda and pushing towards uh, um, new new kind of transformation. You can think of it in terms of the support and the and the ease of setup that you, you this is the second one, which basically, for example, during this uh, COVID-19, they waived certain requirements and as they work with international companies, they always try to make things easier um, and, and basically uh, regulation is always, uh, most of it is agile as, as, as we, um, as we move on and, and we see a third is basically the uh, the penetration or let's say the uh, infrastructure that's happening in Saudi uh, infrastructure in general whether it's in logistics it's in technology in its uh, connectivity uh, you name it there there are mega projects in different uh, sectors different kind of infrastructure investment in the country that will help any business basically um, grow and flourish and uh, the fourth the fourth uh, also one thing about infrastructure is also the payment systems that is basically have advanced greatly in the last few years um, online payment uh, payment technologies uh, flexibility in terms of uh, payment or fintech in general and acceptance of this and the last point is actually access to the um, to the uh, workforce here in Saudi. Uh, there is a, a huge percentage of youth and talented people graduating from schools and they're active and they're, um, and there's this like massive scholarship program to best university around the world and it, it brings back the local talents at the best caliber. So you have access to talent, you have access to uh, government support, you have access to infrastructure, and you have access to kind of the largest market in the region and both uh, mostly in purchase power and, and, and uh, spending. So I think these are the key factors, not to mention the transformation the government is going through and the support that is basically on other ends uh, related to uh, your own workforce and your own employees and so on and so forth. In fact, um, I could share like some of the links that we created uh, as articles that will explain in further details what would be like the right the right mindset or how to think about expanding to Saudi in the right mindset. Uh, I might share the link uh, shortly now on this chat. Uh, it's not it's not really a restriction. It's more of a requirement. So the original requirement, if you go back, and that's an example of a transformation that's already happening. Three years, four years back, the requirements were to have a minimum capital of um, hundreds of thousands, and you have to provide several things to prove. And 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 basically, it was very lengthy process. During the or down down the road, they tried to make it easier, and they just now went down to three basic requirements. 
three government, uh, three company related papers that are fully attested and you're good to go. Uh, the difference with coronavirus time is basically they just removed the attestation requirement. The paper requirement is the same, but they just removed the attestation requirement considering that uh, embassies are uh, not fully uh, working or uh, operating and other stuff. So they removed that kind of restriction, not restriction, sorry, requirement. But when the when when the um, when the times are back to normal, I would assume very much the requirements will be back again. Any other questions? So also, also a couple of things you need to bear in mind in terms of foreign company requirements in Saudi. Um, you obviously have to comply with Saudi Dation as a foreign owned um, company in Saudi. Uh, this is monitored by the General Organization for Social Insurance or GOSI. Um, generally speaking, if you have five employees or less, you would have to have one Saudi national um, to be on team. And obviously, this is this is monitored by Gossi and then on uh, compliant with the NISCAT system as well. In order to process the general manager's residency ID, the Akama, which is similar to Emirates ID here, if you're based in the UAE, um, you would have to hire that first Saudi national to process that. The Saudi national, it doesn't have to be in a management or decision-making capacity. It just needs to be a Saudi national on the payroll with a defined role within the company. Um, so Saudization is definitely something you need to be aware of. Generally speaking, it's around 20 to 30 percent of the workforce um, need to be need to be Saudi nationals. Um, it varies. It, it, it depends on the company size in Saudi and the industry in which you operate. So it can the, the quota of ratio is uh, can change depending on that. Additionally, with tax. Um, you will be paying 20 percent tax on net profits of a portion of a company that is owned by non-Saudi entities. You also have, same as the UAE, the 5% VAT, and withholding tax ranges from 5 to 15%, depending on, on different forms. So Astrolabs aren't tax lawyers, so we definitely recommend you seek tax advice regarding your, your tax requirements in Saudi, but generally speaking, that is uh, something that yeah, should be made clear. Any other questions? Okay, so if there's no, no other questions, um, feel free to send any, any further queries you may have, um, along with if you want clarity on the price, the you know, the brochure that we can share with you, feel free to share that with uh, an email to me, uh, daniel at astrolabs.com. Uh, we just, we've just had another question. In. One of the most common headaches people have setting up in Saudi, so this is from Ahmed. Um, generally, in the past, it's, it's trying, you, you really need somebody on the ground to do these processes for you, which is obviously where we, we fit in. Um, because it is time consuming. It takes three months to fully establish a business. You have to go to various ministries with, for different registrations. Um, it's, it's not the most simple of processes, but because we've done it for you know, over 70 companies in the last year or so, uh, we're very familiar with exactly what needs to be done. Um, if there are any changes to procedures, we work very closely with MISA, the Ministry of Investment in Saudi Arabia. Um, so, yeah, any, any changes and we pass that feedback back to you as, the, as, as a person interested in expanding your company to Saudi. But generally, it was just the actual operations perspective. It, it's a challenging aspects to it. 
Um, also, it's a little bit, can, can be a bit unclear when it comes to the activities that are allowed. Um, so obviously this is something that we need, we, we, get, we give you clarity on to start the process. Yeah, there any more questions? Uh, sorry, I was, I'm not sure I was, um, my, I, I think I was uh, mute, but to comment on that question and regarding the headaches, it's mostly about just understanding the full process. And the main thing is that you have so many fragmented kind of uh, uh, fragmented solutions and platforms you have to manage and handle. Uh, for each service, uh, different credentials, different processes of registrations, and so on and so forth. So basically, the main issue or the main headache, if I should call it this way, is just to keep up with the different kind of platforms and, and services that you need to finalize for the end-to-end -end setup to be able to be fully operational. Um, uh, so that, that's what is my, uh, that's my sense on, on what would be the major uh, challenge for the newcomers. Yeah, I've, and also from um, dealing with clients in the past, they have they have come across you know, colleagues within the same industry as them who have tried to do the process themselves, and you know it takes them a lot longer to try and do these things themselves because they're not familiar with the process. It can take double, if if not more, the more time, and they incur a lot more, lot more costs associated with it because it's, it's impacting their business it's taking them away from doing their day-to-day -day work because they're trying to focus on setting the company up in Saudi so this is where we obviously fit in there are a number of benefits we have which I'll, I'll share with you in, in a brochure once you email me but one of them is the soft landing which acts as your registered address in Saudi that's at Astro Labs Riyadh um, you, you have to have a registered address to open a company in Saudi so we provide access to that space, uh, mentorship. Um, there's a number, of, it's, a, it's a real community at Astrolabs Riyadh. So, you know, it's not necessarily just people working within your, your industry, it's very diverse. We have companies that are tech-based, media-based, uh, manufacturing. It's, it can be a number of different types of, types of companies. Um, and Mustafa is, is based out of Astrolabs Riyadh, so he's very well connected within the Saudi market. If you needed introductions to certain certain people, certain companies, then we may be able to support you with that. Obviously, with the expansion, it can be one of the more challenging aspects is, is getting the message out there and growing your business with that expansion. There are a few, um, I think um, this session is basically uh, towards your questions and answering what you have in mind and that in terms of doubts or, or issues or concerns regarding the expanding uh, to Saudi. But um, I'd like to just um, say a few notes and uh, comments uh, to consider in general. Um, hiring is, uh, you need to understand the kind of structure of hiring there is a, a requirement to register with a, something called the GUSI, which is kind of a social insurance for employees. Um, the, you have to basically also consider the uh, naming uh, regulations. Naming in general, you have two options. If you want uh, uh, to, to book a name in Arabic, uh, you apply, we apply on the system and we see if the name is available and so on and so forth. If you want an English name, uh, it has to be the same name as the mother company. So the mother company is called XYZ. Uh, the local Saudi company will be XYZ Saudi. 
Uh, and then additionally, you have to add the activity type at the end of the name. It's a requirement by the government. So if it is uh, X, Y, Z for communication and technology, you have to add that part, communication and technology, uh, to, the, to the name. Um, additionally, I would also uh, hand, go back to the recruitment. If you're planning to hire um, international people or people from outside Saudi, that they don't have residency in Saudi, you would need something called municipality license. Uh, which uh, which is a kind of uh, simple to do, but it has its own requirements. Um, the 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 the, um, the renewal of the process is fully online uh, after year one. So when you finish first year of operation, you have to do your audit statement, submit it to the authorities, and you can also uh, renew your license or online. It's highly recommended to start with an accounting firm. ASAP, as soon as you set up, you hire an accounting firm because you have to submit VAT reports, you have to submit, which are quarters, you have to kind of submit the withholding tax reports and so on and so forth to the government or to the, the uh, taxation authority. Um, uh, these, these are the top things that come to mind. Obviously, the process is uh, has many uh, ins and outs, and we're happy to tackle any of the concerns. Probably if you go through the process, we're happy to, we're available. Uh, you can uh, reach out to Daniel at Astrolabs or KSA at astrolabs.com, and we're, we're, we're available to support and help. Okay, so there's, there's no, no more questions coming in. So like, like Mustafa says, feel free to reach out to those um, email addresses. More than happy to answer any further questions you may have. Uh, share the brochure, share costs, time, well, time frames are around three months to fully establish a company. Um, and, and schedule individual calls with you if, if to discuss your individual requirements accordingly. Um, so th thank you for everyone that has participated in this. Uh, much appreciated and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you everyone and uh, I hope we answered some of your questions. Um, we're, we're available. Um, have a good day and stay safe.